Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore, so far from home. I set out in search of a reason to go home, and there I found it in the eye. No matter what the storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocky and my sails may be torn, I shall rest in the eye of water rages and the billows begin to roll that blessed rock of ages it speaks peace to my soul you know he holds me in his arms oh so safe and so warm and I find shelter in the eye of the storm no matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocky and my sails may be torn, I shall rest in the eye of Okay, just bulk your seatbelt and let's go. Amen. You say, but you say that every Sunday. Well, every time you get in the car, don't you buckle up? And that's what y'all do. You come to the house of God. Just bulk yourself in that seat and stay right there till I get done. If that's all day, you stay right there. If it's all night, just stay there too. <laughs> Ain't that right? Paul, hey. Reckon you could stay with Paul. He preached way up in the night. And that fellow fell out of the third floor. He got sleepy. He shouldn't have been sitting in the window, should he? <laughs> fell out. And man, Paul had to raise him from the dead. Okay, if you got your Bible, turn the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 2, the Bible says this. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a privilege to be among God's people. It's a joy to be able to worship you. It's a joy to have a copy of the word of God and to be able to read. And it's a greater joy to be able to preach it. And so give liberty, give unction, give power that your name may be glorified, that souls will be stirred and moved and be brought to Jesus Christ. Be glorified, be honored in this message today. We'll say thank you for we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I want to preach to you a little while on the seriousness of stewardship the seriousness of stewardship. It's a serious thing, you know, to be a steward, it really is. And a lot of time we don't realize how serious that is, but we need to recognize that. Thank you, Brother Glenn, appreciate that water. I thanked him before he got here with it, didn't I? First of all, he says it is required. What does the word require mean? It means to insist upon as by right of authority, you know, if you required something, if you require something, it means to demand, it means to order, it means to command, it means to make a demand. And so the Bible said it is required. It's required, it's demanded. And so, hey, just hang on now, hang on that thought now. 
I told you don't fall off. That's the reason you need to buckle up because if you fall off, you're going to get splashed real bad. I'm telling you. Number one, he, I mean, number one, there's required. Number two, he said there's required in stewards. Well, what is a steward? It's one who acts on the behalf of another. It is one who works for another. It is one who transacts business for another person. It is his duty to promote in the best possible manner the interest of his employer. I want to ask you who you're working for today. The Lord, amen. Would you not say if you're saved that you're working for the Lord, that you are transaction business for him? In fact, every man is a steward, whether he realizes it or not, whether he's saved or lost. But really, we who are saved really ought to take this to heart, right? He is liable to be called into account uh, for the manner in which he transacts his business and be removed at the pleasure of his employer. God has a right to call you to give an account any time he takes a notion. That's the reason a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to live to be 100. Yeah, God may see fit when well, you're transacting business to call you in early, say, give an account of your stewardship because you may no longer be a steward. You may no longer be able to transact business for me. If you're not transacting business the way God says you ought to be a transacting business, maybe God says, I better take them out because, you know, they're doing more harm than they are good. Are you doing more harm to the kingdom of God than you're doing good today? Man, man, I mean, boy, what about that? We're stewards of him. Well, the Bible calls us sons. The Bible calls us soldiers. The Bible calls us servants. The Bible calls us sheep. And the Bible calls us stewards. We are stewards of God, right? Who are stewards anyway? Every child of God is a steward. Every child of God is a steward. In fact, everybody's a steward. As I say, while I go, everybody's a steward because, hey, whose house do you live in? You say, it's mine. Oh, oh, is it really? I mean, when you die and kick a bucket, who's it, who's it belong to? Well, it belongs to my wife, my husband, whoever's left behind. Well, what if they're gone? Well, go to my kids. Who, hey, it belongs to God. Don't the house you live in is God's house. What about the car you drive? That's God's car you're driving. What about the clothes you're wearing? That's God's clothes you're wearing. Do you know that? Hey, the food you're eating, that's God's food you're eating. He could hold it back, couldn't he? But thank God he's a good God. He wants to feed you and make you, he wants to make you healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? And whose water are you drinking anyway? Well, that's God's water, right? Whose job are you working on? You're working on God's job. Hey, we are stewards of God. We, we're a transaction business for Almighty God. We need to get a hold of that and realize that because that is very steward. Every human being is a steward in some form or another. Okay, the Bible says something else here. He not only says it's required in stewards, he talked about required and the, you know what a steward is, and then he says faithful. It's required that a steward be found faithful. Be found, that means right now. If God called you to be a count right now, would he find you faithful right now? Yeah. Now, if somebody walked in, the Lord walked in the door, he'd find you in the house of God. He'd probably find some of our members in the bed right now if he went to their house, wouldn't he? He might find some of them up in the mountains or down to beaches or somewhere, you know. But hey, if he walked in here, he'd find you sitting on the pews of Zion Baptist Church. But would he find you faithful in his service? That's the question. How would he find you if he called you to give an account right now? Could he say, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Man, isn't that something? Notice the word faithful, what it means. It means to be constant. It means to be loyal. There's a lot of folks not constant, not loyal, are they? It means to show a, so, a strong sense of duty and responsibility. I heard a preacher preaching yesterday, and he said every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, the bus would pull up and the horn would blow. Said there's a young man driving that. Said every Sunday morning he'd drive up and blow that horn right on time every Sunday. That's what you call taking your responsibility serious, right? Your stewardship serious. It means to be conscientious. You know what conscientious? You ever see anybody conscientious? They want to dot every I and cross every T just right. We got a few of them here in the church like that. They're real conscientious. I'm not going to name names, but they're really conscientious. That's what faithful means. It means to be reliable. It means to be steadfast. 
Ask yourself, am I any of these things? Am I all of these things? Or am I just, if he found me, he wouldn't find me too faithful this morning? If he walked in the door and found me here, would he find me faithful? Would he find you constant? Would he find you unwavering with an unwavering determination? Hey, that's what he said. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Okay, let's look at it just a few minutes. A steward will have to give an account. We have to give an account one day of different things. We will have to give an account of our stewardship in this world. You will, I will. We'll all have to give an account. We'll have to stand before the judge of all the earth and give an account of the life we've lived, the way we transacted business for the Lord. I ask you, how are you transacting business for him this morning? Okay, let's look at it. First of all, we must give an account of our time, our time. How do you spend your time? Well, I know you probably, most of your work, right? Uh, but do you spend your time serving the Lord when you have time? I mean, we ought to serve him all the time, really. I mean, we're on the job. I know you can't go on the, on the job and, and just talk to everybody, go down the line and say, well, my job's running over here and I'll go down and talk to everybody. You've you got to do your job. You're responsible to do your job on the job. But, you know, every once in a while you can sow a seed, right? You can throw in a little word for Jesus every once in a while when you get that chance. Uh, you know, the Bible said, he that can sit the wind will not sow. And so you don't, a farmer don't go out and sow when it's windy. Man, it was windy yesterday, wasn't it? I said, March is coming early. And so, uh, you know, you don't go out and sow when it's windy like that. They blow the seed hither and thither. You, when the wind is not blowing, you sow your seed. And so that's the way it is spiritually speaking. You get that opportunity, that chance, you sow the seed. You can't do that all the time. Sometimes the winds are blowing. And so you got to do it. And so are you spending your time for yourself all the time? Every waking minute, every, uh, every spare minute, you spend your time for yourself. You never think about you're a steward of God. Your time, you spend your time in idleness. You spend your time in promoting your private interest. Hey, you're, you're a steward of God. You're supposed to promote his interest. You're supposed to, uh, you know, to magnify and promote the kingdom of God and magnify him. Oh, brother, are you neglecting God's business for your own business? I remember when I was up on that hill and God was dealing with me about preaching. And I was up there, that old mowing size, and, you know, I was cutting them weeds, that little old place up there. You know, I thought it was a grand little old place. Because I was raised on a red clay hill. Man, that little farm daddy had, I mean, you couldn't plow when it's wet. You'd have nothing but clods. You could knock a mule down with a clod. And so you just couldn't plow when it was wet. I mean, you had to have dry ground. But up, I had that little old place up there, of course. You know, it was small. And, but that garden, man, you could have plowed it when it was wet. It's that black soil, you know. Man, it was great. But I was up on that hillside cutting them weeds. And God said, you shouldn't be up here. You should be winning souls. Hey, what you doing cutting weeds? What you doing cutting briars? Their souls going to hell. Souls lost without Jesus. You need to be concerned about them. We need to be concerned about souls going to hell, right? How much time do you spend for the Lord Jesus considering you spend for yourself? You know how many hours there are in a week? There's 168 hours in a week, right? If you come to church three times a week, if you come three times a week, you know how many hours you spend in church if you come three times a week? About six hours, about six hours, right? Maybe five. You come on Sunday morning. If you come for Sunday school, you spend two hours, two hours in church, right? You come on Sunday night, you might, uh, you know, about an hour, hour and a half. Come on Wednesday night, an hour, hour and a half. And so that's what, that's what five hours? You throw it in an extra hour for six if we go over a little bit. Six hours a week. You've got 168 hours. You've got 168 hours. 168 hours a week. You've got 168 hours a week. And you only spend six of them in the house of God. If you come three times a week, I mean, if everybody if everybody who was here this morning came three times a week, we'd ever, ever service this church would be filled with you three times a week. But, you know, Sunday nights, it thins down a little bit. On Wednesday nights, it thins down a little bit more. So I know some of you don't spend six hours in church a week. But what do you do with all them hours you got? You got 168 hours, 168 hours. You're a steward of God. You're supposed to be doing business for God. You're supposed to be promoting the kingdom of God and his glory and his honor. But look at you. What are you doing? You're promoting your own, Right? We got to give an account of our time. 
your time don't count too much watching who shot Lucy, right? I mean, I guess everybody watches TV, but you know what? There's a lot of things you'll be doing for the Lord while you're watching TV sometimes too, can't you? Number two, what? We must give an account. We've got to give an account of our time. What about the talents you have? He gave you an ability, right, to do whatever you do. Is your talent yours or is it God's? If you got talent, who gave it to you? The Lord gave it to you. Listen to what the Bible said in the book of Exodus. In case you think my talent is mine, preacher, it's mine. I can do with it what I please. I can do with it what I please. Well, let's see if you can. The Bible said in the book of Exodus chapter number three or 31, excuse me, 31. I have called Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and silver and brass and in cutting of stone to set them in carvings of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Who done that? God, he filled him with wisdom to do that. He gave him that ability. He gave him that understanding. If God has given you a talent, if you've got a talent, God gave it to you. Don't you claim it for yourself. Don't you take that glory for yourself. I ask you if you're using your talent to build the kingdom of God. I was telling the fellows in, down in the Sunday school class this morning, went to the hospital to see one and they said she was calling for me so I run up there right before service and I went in the bathroom as I was coming out and this young man, I won't go through the whole story, but anyway, 